All right, so welcome back to the bus. Uh, it's freaking cold out, uh, but it's only gonna get colder, so <laughs> I better not start complaining now. Should probably wait till like January to complain, but you can see my breath. Uh, even though I have a little heater right here. It's not the best heater, but it keeps me warm-ish. Uh, <laughs> so uh, things have been going a little bit slow at the bus, but that's okay. Uh, that's the way that this stuff goes. Um, what I've done so far, I think some of this is a refresher, but um, over here, let me flip you around. So that's where the hurry hot heater was. So that's been taken out. Uh, and I took out oops, all of the dash stuff. It's all of the dash cover. Um, and then I've actually cleaned off the metal across the top of that as well. Um, I'm probably going to build like a wood uh, dash of some sort uh, to take up that space and like over here will be a wood cabinet. This right here ding, is the uh, windshield wiper motor so my whatever containment I make here is gonna have to go around that which is fine. Uh, this giant mass of wires is the wires that were powering the heaters that are in the back uh, so it's just there to be kicked outside. Uh, and then over here is where all the big work has happened. So this was all console, uh, and there was a heater down here. So the heater's been taken out, and you can see I've got a rag, because uh, there's water leaking in kind of across the seam, which makes this nice little puddle back in the corner, uh, which then kind of drains across to this cover. This cover is actually engine access. Whee! So there's uh, what I believe is my transmission sitting there. Uh, good time. And so I'm going to turn that into like a, a wooden access point or something when I'm working on the floor. Um, so here's another one of those little uh, connection joints that I've put in where I took the heater out and obviously when I put a heater back in it'll be reconnected there. Um, and then all of this is the wiring that I've got kind of suspended up on bungee cords right now so that it's up off the floor. Um, so that I can start working on this section of the floor. I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Uh, although, I don't know uh, how quickly it's going to dry in this cold, but I've got a heat gun so that I'm probably going to use that to dry it up a bit. And then I'll grind it down. Uh, and I've started cleaning the bus using the tri-sodium phosphate, um, which works really, really well. Uh, and so I'll be, I'll be using that to kind of clean the whole bus from front to back. Uh, before I put the uh, musty, rusty metal primer, it's a bit of a tongue twister, uh, on. And once that's done, I'm going to put up the furring strips uh, so that I can do spray foam insulation. One of the things I've been trying to figure out, um, I'm still kind of racking my brain on, uh, is I want to take out about two-thirds of the windows. And usually, if you were doing it in the summer, it'd be really I can pop out the windows, um, hang on just a second, uh, using these screws, you take out the two screws, or the four, and then the whole window actually like leans forward and then you can pull it out. Um, in the summertime, that's not too much of a problem, uh, you just pop them out and then you put sheet metal on the outside, rivet it. Uh, and then you can do your insulation stuff on the inside. The problem is, um, in, if I put it in when it's cold, uh, when it heats up, in the summertime, it'll do what's called uh, tin canning or pop canning, uh, where the metal will actually uh, bend and warp because it's expanding uh, from the heat. And so if I'm gonna do that, uh, I would have to heat up the metal uh, while I'm riveting it which, as far as I can tell, isn't really a possibility because uh, it's just a lot of work to keep the metal hot enough while you're doing the riveting process, uh, which apparently is a little time consuming. Um, but what I've been thinking about doing is maybe taking uh, these same frames, here we go, um, taking the frame out, removing the glass, uh, and putting uh, aluminum into the frame. Uh, while it's in the workshop, uh, like inside. 
I'm not 100% sure if that's what I'm going to do yet um, or if I'm just going to handle the windows in the summertime uh, as like a auxiliary part of the process. I don't know. I When I'm thinking about this project, it's really, really difficult um, with my anxiety and the way my depression works. It's really hard for me to look big picture all the time. Um, and so a lot of times I focus on each individual step and then when I finish that step, I go to the next step um, and just take it in that kind of process. So I don't know. So it's on my list of stuff to think about. Minimally though, uh, I'll be doing the spray foam insulation in the ceiling and then in the wall pockets, uh, which are these guys that go down to the floor. Um, and so that'll be spray foam insulation and then there'll be spray foam insulation in the ceiling. Uh, because if anything, that'll give me some amount of warmth, uh, some amount of uh, kind of energy retention, and then I can handle taking windows out, putting up aluminum, and adding insulation over those in the summertime. Um, what I'd like to do is get it so that it's gonna retain some amount of heat, um, and I can even put like thermal blankets or something over the windows, although that's an added expense uh, that I don't really know if I have in my budget for what would be considered a temporary solution. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what else to say, uh, except I'm gonna keep working on stuff. Uh, cleaning is the biggest thing that I'm facing right now um, and keeping warm. <laughs> I think it's time to buy a stocking cap and something to keep my nose warm because it gets very cold. Uh, other than that, things are going great. I'm feeling pretty good, and I uh, hope you all had a good Thanksgiving, and I'll do an update again in a couple days. Okay.